Hey, how's everyone doing? As promised, I'm going to do more practice problems to help you guys understand the concepts better. In today's video, we're going to do a fun problem that revolves around loops. So for this problem, we're given an input of size n, and we have to output a right angle triangle with n number of rows. So for example, here we have n equals 1, so that means we only have one row. So here we have one star. And if n equals 2, then we're going to have a triangle that looks like this. And if we have n equals 3, we're going to have a triangle that looks like this. Feel free to pause the video and try this exercise yourself. All right, now let's solve this problem together. So before we do any code, whenever we're given a problem, we should try to find a pattern. So in this example, you're going to notice that as n increases by 1, the number of rows also increases. So when there's one row, we have one star. And when n equals 2, we're always going to have that one star at the top, and then we add two stars below it. And then for n equals 3, we keep everything above and then we add three stars. So this seems pretty straightforward, and you're probably wondering, why do we even need loops? So for n equals 1, we can solve this problem by just doing print, and then just putting a star like this. And for n equals 2, we can just copy this, and paste it, and add another star. And obviously for n equals 3, we just copy and paste, and add another star. So what we're doing here is very tedious, and if n grows to a very large number, let's say 100, then that's going to require a lot of copying and pasting, and it's very easy to make a mistake when you copy and paste. So as programmers, whenever you notice a pattern that gets repeated a lot, this screams that we should use loops. So first, let's declare a variable n to store the number of rows, and just for simplicity, let's set it to 3, so that way we can output this triangle up here. So now all we have to do is write a for loop. So we can do for row in range, so as you notice, the first row always starts with one star. So now we can just put one as our starting point, and then we want to go up to n. So whenever you use the range function, it basically returns a sequence of numbers starting from zero by default and increments by one by default and stops before a specified number. So right now n is our stopping value. So in order to also include three in our range, we have to add one to n. So basically now our range will go to one, two, three, and then when it sees 4, it's going to stop. So now let's put the colon, and now let's go to the next line. And now all we have to do is print, and then we take the row, and now we can just multiply by the star character, and this will give you that many star characters. And now let's run this code. The reason why we got two of these triangles is because we have these print statements here. So let me delete them, and now let's run it again. And here we got a triangle of size 3. So this is pretty cool, and if you got lost, don't worry. Please check out this video on how to debug. And just to quickly show you how to debug this program, we can just add a print statement here and type row, just so that we know what's happening inside this loop. So now if you run this code, you're going to see 1, 1 star, 2, 2 stars, 3, and then 3 stars. As you can see, the row increases by 1, and it doesn't go to the 4 because it's non-inclusive. Alright, awesome. Now let's remove this line. And let me show you something cool. Now let's change this n to let's say 100 like I mentioned before. And now let's run this code. And boom, we got a gigantic triangle that's not going to render because my browser is too small. So let's use a smaller number so that it can render on the page. So let's do 50. And now let's click run. Okay, this is still pretty big. So let's do 25 instead. Click run. And look at that. That looks pretty cool, right? And this only took us basically three lines of code. And that is the power of loops. And one more thing to make this program even better is that we can create a function. Instead of always changing this variable n, we can just do define triangle, and then we can put n inside here, and then put the colon, and then tab everything here, and let's delete this variable. And now we can just do triangle and 25, and now we can click run, and boom, there you go. And now we can also do this. We can do triangle size 3, size 5, size 15. And now if we click run, you're going to get all these different triangles. And this is programming. And for those of you guys who want a challenge, try to create a pyramid instead of a triangle. Basically now the n values have to be odd numbers in order to get a pyramid. So for size 1, it will look like this. Instead of 2, we have to use size 3. Your pyramid will look like this. And then we can have size 5, where the pyramid will look like this. Try this challenge out and feel free to drop your code below. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Peace out.